have a backup. Here we go. Welcome to another presentation in this Quantum Human Summit series. This is all about expanding our multidimensional awareness. And my guest today is one who has an expanded multidimensional awareness. And he brings forward beings of light and channels messages from the illumined realms. Today, we're talking with Karsten Spencer, who's here to share on an angel communion via light and sound, harmonizing into your divine connection. Hi, Karsten. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Hi, Loren. So great to be back with you remotely. Remotely is good. It is the fifth dimension, mm -hmm. and it's actually multidimensional. I know. Year, beautiful. Isn't it? Yes. So, yes. And you're down there in the jungle, and I'm here uh, sitting by the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> yes. it, is actually, it's, it is actually out my window. So, yes, very close. Yeah. That is cool. So we are connected in the energy and our multidimensionality allows us to feel that and to feel the energetics of where we are on the planet. And so we're bringing that into this presentation and it's so lovely. Okay. So as I shared, your multidimensional awareness puts you in touch with Metatron, Quan Yin, the angelic realms. It's so beautiful. And so as we're talking about being the quantum human, can you give us your perspective of what that means? Well, you know, for me, it really, uh, just in a real simple way to put it, it means learning to trust your intuition as opposed to your, what I would call the karmic programming. <laughs> Because we come in as kids straight from that angelic realm. I mean, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm working on on a play now. Really, really, uh, uh, it, it kind of a life journey play. And I went to my to my guides, and they had me sitting up on Saturn, the planet Saturn, which rules our physical life, viewing my family situation as I was choosing to come into this life. And it was very powerful. And I'm suddenly I'm writing this scene based on what my angels were showing me. And I don't know that, that what my angels were showing me is exactly what happens when we, you know, move into a, a human experience, you know, in this time and space playground. Um, but I, th I think, I think it's close because I really felt that energy of sitting there on, on the planet Saturn with my higher power going, it's, you know, what's your next adventure going to be about? And, you know, we focused on Mother Earth and it was this beautiful blue glowing energy. And I said, oh, that looks interesting. And he said, okay, let's find the exact situation that's going to allow you to take on the karma, which basically is the obstacle course, the, the game that you're playing to move through so that you can not only reconnect with this divine energy, but learn how, uh, what exercise those muscles that allow you to be more of a conscious creator a conscious uh manifester because that's really i think what this earth experience is about it's about manifesting and it's not always about what we're manifesting out there and there's a lot of people who come in and they do do huge things that the whole world can see but what my guides keep telling me number one that that's a possibility for anyone but the most powerful creation that we make while we're here is our own life, our connection with people, our connection to ourself and our heart energy, our confrontation of some of the, what we would call the negative or the not really helpful energies that are here on the planet, like blame and guilt and shame and those, those beliefs where we put the power outside of ourselves. And so when I talk about the the main connection to the angels and 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 the you know d divinity the multidimensionality it's trusting our intuition which very early for most of us we're talked out of we're told not to trust the imagination we you know a lot of kids you know have I, I had like a, a, a imaginary friend when I was little and very quickly everyone was like oh no that's not real but I held on to that. Literally, it became my, I don't even know how to describe this. 
it became, became my inner guide, I guess is the way it is, that didn't feel separate from me, but it definitely felt separate from the collective consciousness, from the things that people were telling me. Not always. Sometimes, you know, the, your parents give you advice and things that are consistent with, you know, spiritual truths, but mostly it's how to fit into a, a paradigm of life that really is designed to put the power out there rather than inside. And so that's really uh, the, the, the intuitive quality. And like, like when you said he, he channels this information, I don't think of myself as a channel because the way the, the, the guides and the energies have showed up for me and they complete, continue to remind me of this, is like, we're part of you. We're an extension of your consciousness. And that's why you're able to access us. And the, the one that's been coming lately is St. Germain. Very yeah. powerfully, he, he came about six months ago. And uh, all I have to do is mention his name. And I feel that energy here. And I feel it as me, it's like an expanded part of me, and it's it's my my ego mind or my intellect that that has trouble navigating that. So when I get up into my head and try to figure it out, you know, the old doubts come in and I lose the connection. But when I stay in my heart and simply listen or feel, I can feel that presence. And the other thing I want to say to people, because I work with a lot of people, it's like, I feel like I need to reconnect with my angels. I need to do that. I really encourage them to trust their intuition and to use their imagination. Ask yourself, what, what, what would my higher power or an angel feel like? What would it be like? And almost always people can come up with something, but very often it's not what they think think it's going to be. I've heard people say, you know, think about your angel. What might it might it be in a guided meditation? And they'll go, oh, I see a butterfly. And I say, great. That's your starting point. That's the opening. Start talking to that butterfly. That butterfly will give you more information. And as we begin to access that inner world through the imagination and validate it, most of us will have, I think everybody has those kind of magical experiences. Probably every day, little things happen. But the ego mind is very good at trying to put it into some something that makes sense with the collective consciousness, rather than going, oh, I'm going to trust that that white feather that just floated down and made me think of my mom was her angel coming in, being present. And so it's really beginning to trust and validate the magic that's all around you. See, and that feels so good. It really does. And this is a skill that we are honing. So to hear you say this is validation for our own experiences as well. And it's getting really exciting. I just want to reiterate what you said there about you see yourself more, you know, you have access to that information because it's part of you. We all are one. And so that is so comforting. It really is. And so the doorway would be the imagination, but the imagination is consciousness itself. And um, the feeling that we put into the our, our uh, awakened consciousness, our aware consciousness, then imprints the subconscious and there's our world. And so to me, that is the quantum human where we, the universe is within us. We are all part of it. And so on a scientific level, quanta really means subatomic. It's like the smallest of all particles, particles and waves, but we are that. And so you mentioned heart centered as well. And this is really important because the heart is what feels, right? And the mind is what thinks <laughs> and tries to um, put us into that driver's seat. But when we allow the heart to be in the driver's seat, we can really watch the road pass us. It can take us to some really miracle places. So do you have, an, I know we're going to talk about being in the, the heart more and activating the throat chakra. But can you share about how one would really 
release the mind, the ego mind, give it direction to calm down and listen to the heart. Well, I, th I think, you know, it, it, only the ego would want to get rid of the ego, right? So I say, oh, I want to get rid of my ego. That's the <laughs> ego that wants to get rid of it. The ego needs to learn to be the listener, and it needs to remember that it's not in control, that it is co-creating the entire your entire experience. And I feel that each of us has our own individual universe that intersects with this universe that we're sharing, but... I have a feeling that if I could move out of my body and get, get into your head and look at the world through your eyes, it would look very, very different. There would be similar things, but you're, I, even, even the visual aspect of the world, because what I call green may not be at all what you call green. So each of us are not only taking in that information, we're also putting it out there. So through our consciousness, through our ability to look out at the world or to act, activate our senses, we're creating the world. And what I think is really helpful for people to remember about specifically the heart chakra, which we're talking about the chakra systems, is the chakras are our inner senses. It's how we read energy. But because the heart, the throat, and the solar plexus, I call that the, the, the love triangle because this is how we come into balance these three. But we want to balance everything. This is really the 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 special offer that I have ha, have for people where we're going to do a, a 90 minute uh, really uh, experiential play shop where we come into balance through the divine feminine with love, power, and wisdom. The wisdom is the top, top three chakras. It's the third eye, the crown, and our soul star chakra. The power is sacral center where we have our life force, our grounding into Mother Earth, because as we connect with our Earth energy and the powerful energy that is continuing to evolve through Earth, that's why our soul decided to come here to feel this power that we call time and space here, this ability to create very powerfully. But we need to start with the heart, and the heart knows the eternality of our being it knows that we are eternal beings and that this body is just a temporary vehicle to help help us have this experience but there's more the ego is so afraid that it's going to end it wants to hold on to this one body but when it can step back and realize oh there's so much more that i don't need to figure out or fix anything it really is about staying open being on the adventure and really allowing life itself to guide you. We can't do that unless we've come into balance with our solar plexus, and that's why the solar plexus, heart, and throat are that love energy, because that balance with those three chakras allows you to feel the presence of that divine power. And that's why I think the most powerful tool that people can do, and we go, we go right back to Ram Das in the 60s, be here now. And as much as I teach that and I've practiced it during my life, you know, the ego is strong and our ability to rehash the past based on old regrets or whatever and project into the future, particularly when life shows up not the way we want it to, not the way the ego wants it to. Very often it triggers a story of, oh, God, something's wrong. As soon as we go into the something wrong is here, we're denying what's happening we're taking ourselves out of our point of power so my one of my favorite affirmations is if it's happening it's required and then what if nothing's wrong what if this is just what's happening what if it's true that i'm in a divine evolving process with infinite help and guidance and my soul energy would not bring to me anything that is not consistent with my own growth and my own awakening. The ego can hold on to that belief. See, that's the challenge. What's, what's causing the ego to feel negative and get us into trouble is that the ego doesn't trust that it's co-creating with everything that's around it. And for me as well, because I know when I really get triggered, it's easy for me to go, oh, that old spiritual stuff, but this happening now shouldn't be happening and it's wrong. And, you know, that old 
victim stuff, blame, the world's working against me, those old beliefs. So it really takes practice because this is also what our parents teach us, right? Parents come in and they want the child to be safe. And that paradigm comes from a belief that the world is not safe. And because we're co-creators and we create through our beliefs, that's why when we look out there, we're looking at a world where there's a lot of stuff that's going on that, you know, when we see it from the outside, it doesn't look safe. What we don't realize is that if we went into those war-torn areas, those things that from a more peaceful place, we say, oh my God, that's wrong. That's not what I want to, want to create. If we were able to go into the consciousness of those people, we would see it from a very different place. If we were able to see it from their soul energy who sees the big picture, then we would really be able to see it from a different place. So partly what we need to say to the ego is, you're not meant to know what it's all about. And maybe you won't realize what it is until you leave the body. But your opportunity, your invitation is to show up with an open heart as best as you can. And, you know, practice these spiritual tools, which, you know, I think one of the most powerful ones is to be present and ask yourself, what are you telling yourself about this situation? And is there another way of looking at it? I think that is profound wisdom, Karsten. The Can you imagine that world where everyone is available to look and see another person's perspective? If, if we are able to get there ourselves and show others how to do it as well, that is a beautiful world. That is well, a world that's peaceful. Well, and what I've noticed is it's not... It, it is, it's about showing other people, but it's not about telling them because a lot of us, you know, we, we get on a spiritual journey. We have these ahas we see. And immediately I'm like this. I want to share it with everyone. <laughs> but mm -hmm. in doing that, you confront people's victimhood. You can confront people's belief system, which is confronting the ego. And when the ego, if it doesn't have another place to go, it's going to push back. Yes. So the, the the way we share it is by being it. By being it. And there's a powerful thing that will really work works very powerful in intimate relationships. I chose kind of early on with my partner that I was not going to make him wrong no matter what happened. It doesn't mean I wouldn't have feelings about what came up, but I would deal with my feelings, I would feel them. And in bringing it back to me, if when you get triggered regardless of what it is, the person, the place, the thing, the event, if you thank the messenger and get the message by noticing what's the feeling in here, because the most powerful thing whenever we get triggered is the feeling in here. And that's why most of us jump up into our head with an uncomfortable feeling and immediately go into the fight, flight, fixing. We'll usually rehash the past. What did I do in the past that caused this situation to happen here? And what do I need to do in the future to fix it? And how do I deal with this situation? And very often it's also this whole mental game that we play. Usually it means putting whatever's happening outside of our heart. <laughs> and we go into the fight, flight, karmic fixing, which means we're taking our life force energy and strengthening the belief that the life isn't safe. I have to be careful and watch what I do. Otherwise, it's going to come back and bite me in the ass. <laughs> and so what happens is we strengthen that belief. And because we're co-creators and our co-creator is always saying yes to whatever we believe, it's like, oh, they still want to play play that you know fight flight game with life. More stuff starts coming at us because we can fix that one situation, but then we turn around and it's happening here, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's dealing with the feelings that they're coming up and changing your beliefs, just starting by what if nothing's wrong? What if this is just what's happening? What if life's not working against me? And then once you feel, because you got to feel the feeling, because that's what brings you from the head into these powerful chakras that are teaching you how to be here in this physical universe. It's what connects you with the life on the planet. One of my favorite teachers on the planet is nature, specifically the trees. And the trees 
speak to us now very clearly because, and what they often say to me is, oh, thank God you're here. I'll often go into the botanical gardens and, and be with the, the huge redwoods. There's a little redwood forest in there. They'll say, and they don't say it in words. I feel it in my heart. But what they say, oh, thank you for being here because you understand who we are. And so through you and your presence, we are evolving the whole planet, which is what we're here to do. There are ancestors who have been here way before we humans evolved. But now that we've evolved, they can access our mind and our imagination to speak with us. Does that make sense? Yes, it really does. And I love everything that you've said. And I actually just want to say how empowering that is when you said you never want to make your partner wrong. You never want to. And so that is really that really takes full responsibility and honoring another person. And relations are our pathway to ascension. And they 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 mirror back to us what what we need to work on. So I love that. Thank you, Karsten. I do love the I love all of it. I love how you specifically chose the obstacles in your life to bring you here to this point. And we know from your story that that was not easy. You did go through obstacles in your life to get here, but look at where you are and how you're connected in this way. So absolutely, it's a beautiful journey and um, it's hope. it brings hope to everyone's lives. So share with us more on this love triangle of the, the chakras or the, the throat, the heart and the solar plexus and actually the chakra system itself and how it can bring us into communication with our multidimensionality. Well, yeah, I, I love playing playing with the chakras and just kind of practicing listening to them. So very often my, my meditation in the morning will be to tune into gravity and that divine energy of Mother Earth that's holding me here. So I connect with the Earth Star Chakra, which I visualize. And we, we can all do this together. Let's just take a moment to kind of breathe into our connection with Mother Earth. If you're sitting down, just tune into your magnetic connection with the chair. If you've got your feet on the floor, feel that energy that's holding your feet on the floor as that living energy of Mother Earth that is saying, yes, you're supposed to be here. And then imagine or visualize, use your powerful visualizing aspect to cr actually create energetic roots that are moving right down through your tailbone, through your feet, all the way down through the floor and plugging in at the very center of the earth to your personal earth connection. And as you make that conscious connection, we literally allow fresh new energy to blossom, to begin to move, and we can actually breathe it back up through our intention, through that column of light, breathing it into and feeling it actually activating at that point of connection with the chair or with the floor. And then we want to notice right there at the root chakra now, our relationship between, or the relationship between breath and gravity, spirit and earth. Just notice Mother Earth pulling that divine spirit into your awareness, into your consciousness and activating not just the mind or the thinking aspect, but more potently and more importantly, activating our ability to feel, to experience the presence. So we've just very simply used the root chakra and the earth star chakra to call in that divine energy, which is automatically or organically balancing all the chakras, moving us into this here now space. And as we're here, I want you to imagine that you are in a redwood forest or some sort of nature place. Maybe it's a place that you've been to before or a place that just comes through your imagination. And feel the life that is there, the life force that you share with your own body, the breath itself, all the plants and trees around you. 
as the quantum scientists tell us, even solid inanimate objects are filled with life, that divine vibration. And so what we connect with that allows the ego to relax and expand into something grander than itself is what we would call the universal mind. I think it's, it's what I feel that scientists are talking about when they talk about the quantum field. It's divine consciousness. So then if we move up into the solar plexus, just move your awareness up into the solar plexus and notice what you feel. That solar plexus is able to transmute that pure life force energy into creativity via our ability to choose, our willpower. It's the energy that says, what do I want to do? And it's intimately connected with our emotions. And notice how the breath, when you breathe, it moves into these lower chakras, throat, heart, and solar plexus. It actually reaches all the way down with that diaphragm into the sacral. But the main energy that's constantly moving and processing this time-space experience with our consciousness and our ability to be here now and share our energy, it's the throat, the heart, and the solar plexus. So let's tune into the throat now because I want to allow everyone to let that throat chakra activate the entire chakra system just so you can feel it. This is kind of a simplistic thing we'll be doing more uh, during the, the special offer. But as we, number one, recognize that the throat is the one chakra that can actually make physical vibration, vibrations that we can hear and sense and feel. And in its ability to do that, we simply need to have the intention that I'm going to make a tone and allow the throat chakra through that vibration to bring my entire chakra system into harmony. So let's do an ohm now with that intention that simply feeling that vibration through the throat will harmonize the entire chakra system. So we're going to take a deep breath. We're going to, we'll do it three times, three deep breaths three ohms, making sure when you come into the mm, the M energy, you're going to feel the throat actually activating the chakras in your head. So it's going to activate the higher chakras through that vibration. That's why humming can be so helpful if you're feeling stressed out. Mm, just a soft hum, even if it's you're in a place where there's other people around. Soft hum, most people won't be able to hear it, and it can bring you into balance. So as we do the three ohms, hold the hum, be with the vibrations, be in the experience, and then we'll sit in silence for a minute or so. So here we go, exhaling all the breath. Inhale. You breathe in, drawing in that spirit. Oh. 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 And just noticing what I often will play with when I do this simple three ohms and 
being in the energy is noticing how long I can be in that empty, still, silent space before the thoughts come in. Because most of us think of ourselves, think of ourselves as the thoughts, as our opinions, as everything we can think, as what decisions, you know, that we're talking to ourselves about life as we move through it. The ability to notice when you're not thinking and you're just being is a powerful practice. And it's something that needs to be practiced because most of the time when we're not thinking, we are in that la la place, but we're not that conscious of it. We kind of go a little bit unconscious. And so being able to experience that not thinking, notice when the thoughts come in, means you're beginning to notice what you're telling yourself, what that inner dialogue is. And that gives you the chance to begin to confront those beliefs, those old stuff that comes up that aren't consistent with this more expanded view, with this understanding that we are eternal quantum beings that are more than the body, that are connected with everything around us. You're glowing, my dear. <laughs> yes, thank you. I loved it. I really do. I could, I could feel the uh, multidimensional awareness of that. And then I felt when you were talking about how you're an extension of St. Germain and your guides, I really felt that. I felt I began to sense that. And I truly hope that everybody can begin to sense that because that is magical. And I know it might be kind of hard for the, the, the mind to wrap around what is an aspect? How are you an aspect of a master? But that is pretty cool when we can feel that. Very cool. Well, and we're, we're still learning how to navigate these different energies that are that are guiding us. And what's happened is we, we make early decisions based on early trauma, based on things that will happen in childhood or stuff that's downloaded in our DNA from our ancestors. If we look at our, our history, there's been a lot of craziness out there, particularly around spirituality, right? Look, so many of the wars and the killing has had to do with arguments about what the belief system is about God, right? If you don't believe in the right God, then you're going to cause problems, so we got to kill you, right? And so... What we're still, and we, you know, to recognize that we're at the very beginning, in a sense, of this ability to experience this human playground, this time space playground from a human point of view. And so it's navigating our thinking aspect and our imagination with our feeling aspect. And what ha what's happened for all of us is we've gotten triggered. And so we haven't been willing to fully be here into the body. And that's what my angels keep saying. They keep saying, stay in that open space because then we can move into you because they want to experience this life with us and guide us at the same time. So it's recognizing that there are a big part of us is sitting in the soul star chakra above our head. And I don't know that we're, we're seeing it from a physical point of view. So we make it a place above our head. But the truth is, it's just part of the energy that, that's that's flowing around. But that divine energy is a part of us, and we can feel it more and more powerfully as a part of us when we let go of needing to figure it out. Right? It's those aha moments. What is an aha moment? It's a moment when the mental body, the physical body, the emotional body all come together with this expansion of understanding or growth. We feel it physically, right? We get goosebumps. We feel like energy moving through our body. It literally is an evolutionary thrust when we have an aha moment. So it's just, it's trusting those. The thing that's that I find really magical about learning to trust and validate all the emotions, particularly those triggers, because that's where your life force has gotten stuck. So if you can say, oh, I really just, you know, and a lot, especially for anger, anger is a good one, particularly for women, because you guys have been not allowed to really truly express your anger and those strong feelings for eons. 
The gift is as of 2012, we're opening into that divine feminine. That's why I'm really excited about this special offer where we're really going to, from the point of view of the divine feminine, we're going to activate that triad of love, power, and wisdom. And so it really is coming into balance, which also the divine feminine feels the connection. The divine feminine is mother earth and mother nature. We don't use the word mother by accident about this earth experience. It is about being here now and learning to trust our creative abilities. Because the truth is, we can create heaven on earth or we can create hell. And I know all of us have done it both, probably in the same day sometimes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, we are here to bring heaven on earth. So I wanted to give you a moment for an activation in this presentation as well. It already feels like an activation, actually, with that um, chakra ohm and, and connecting in that way. But tell us more about the soul star chakra that you did just mention and really um, how we can work with it. How do we harmonize it and balance it and be in communion with our higher self and our guides? Well, it's such a wonderful question uh, because the, the, those how questions, those questions are really palpable. But what we need to learn to do is ask ourselves, activate our intuition. It doesn't mean we don't reach out. There's a lot of wonderful teachers, and energy workers and people who have had the experience and wants to share them. But my feeling is that any teacher that is really, uh, really going to be beneficial is the one that always turn, turns you back to your own power and your own intuition. So let's do that. I want to do I want to do a St. Germain Purple Flame activation before we before we, we end today. I know I've did, probably done that before with, with, with your group as well. But because St. Germain and particularly Huan Yin have been so present lately, the activation continues to evolve. The energy is really powerful. As a matter of fact, I was doing the purple flame activation uh, about six months ago and uh, explaining it as St. Germain's purple flame activation. And suddenly Quan Yin came through and she was like, sorry, but that purple flame activation came from me. And I actually felt that St. Germain part of me kind of step back and go, Oh, yeah, of course it did. You <laughs> had to step back. But I've really been activating it on the planet. And there was really this moment when that divine Kuan Yin energy, which feels very like pure source energy. Kuan Yin for me connects also with Pele, the goddess of the volcano from, from uh, Hawaii. It connects with that energy and with Mother Ocean. She's a very powerful, loving, present energy. Um, they're speaking to me now. She's sharing, for me, she's the divine feminine and St. Germain is more of the divine masculine because he's more active. He can take this divine loving energy because Kuan Yin just pours pure loving energy into the system. Loving energy is creative energy. And St. Germain or other aspects of us, the more masculine, can choose where to focus it. But if we're not tuned in at the source to our feminine energy and we're just using that masculine energy, control, manipulation, that's what it becomes. It becomes creating more negative karma. Um, but what I'd like to do now when you talk about the, the soul star chakra is just take a moment to close your eyes again. Feel yourself grounded in your body and then just imagine that sitting above your head is a portal. That's how I like to like to see it. I see, see it like a big round golden ring. And this is just the way my imagination is showing me. And what it is, as we focus on it, it activates that ring as a divine vacuum that is calling in divine energies to us. And the first thing I invite people to do is notice the feeling as, the, as we imagine calling in energy from that soul star chakra above our head with the breath. Remember, the breath is your most potent active consciousness because the breath, you can focus the flow of it through your body. You can feel it coming in and out of you. So as we breathe it in, feel as though you're breathing in pure soul star energy and just notice how it feels 
letting the ego believe, or if it doesn't totally believe it, pretend that imagine, use your imagination to see that energy above your head, that portal. And sometimes it can be helpful to visualize it as a a sieve that is able to filter out anything that's not yours and bring in your pure essence. I love the word essence because it brings in what is essential to you. And just notice that. The more we're willing to just practice feeling, notice what it feels like for us, as we do that, we will get guidance. But that's that's the, the most simplest way I, I can explain it is any of these chakras. You can do this with any of your chakras. Tune into your third eye and take a couple of breaths and just notice what, what the experience is, what the felt vibration of this space is. Because when we come from feeling rather than trying to figure it out, we automatically activate the heart, solar plexus, and throat. Doesn't mean the thinking aspect is not still going to be there, but we're not we're not looking with the with the uh, the judging mind. The other thing that came up for me recently, and this has been helpful for clients, so I'm going to share it, is I got this voice from it was it was Saint Germain, who said. Stop looking and let yourself see. Stop hearing and let yourself, I mean, stop listening and let yourself hear. Because looking and hearing very often come from that ego place of you're looking for something specific or you're listening for something specific. When we allow ourselves to see and hear, we're opening to the quantum. We're coming from a place of curiosity. We're letting go of what we think we're looking for, and we're able to see what's actually here. The gift of that is, in doing that, we activate the who's really here. We activate our full system. We stay open. We bring in the inner child, which, you know, inner child part of us is that joyful, spontaneous, adventurous, curious part of it. A child is on an adventure until we start telling it what the world is really about. And then it's like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you can actually feel yourself doing that as adults because the inner child is always present with us. But when the serious of life comes up, we push it down and go into our old stuff. It's really being willing to come at the world with the inner child. It doesn't mean we don't still do our adult things, but we can make it a game. I mean, even the most difficult thing can be shifted very quickly if we look at it from a different point of view. How many yeah. of us, when there's a bunch of stuff today, have a little subconscious voice saying, oh my God, this is my life. I'm always being punished in a way. You know, why is life such a problem? It's because you have a belief that it is. And so it's going to show up as that. Yes, yes. All right. I love that, Karsten. Thank you so much. It really is so powerful to slow down in that way, be here now, as you mentioned, to be very present and slow down. That was a great exercise in feeling how when we slow down and tune in like that, we raise our frequency. I truly hope everyone is feeling elated at this moment and feeling in tune. And so it's worthy to do this often, to do this practice, my gosh, a couple of times a day, actually. Well, and, 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 and one, of the very, one of the very simple things is just taking a moment to remember to breathe <laughs> and remember that when you breathe, if you've already set up that structure, you're calling in divine spirit, right? And we've all done that. Anyone who's listening to this right now, you've already connect, created those synapses in the brain that when you stop and remember to breathe, you're consciously connecting with that soul star chakra, that divine essence of who you are, and then take a moment to feel the presence. 
recognizing that if you've been triggered, if other stuff going is going on, the presence may be, oh, there's a energy that I used to call uncomfortable here. Let me just be with it because the what allows that energy to not only move, but actually nourish the chakra system is by simply making space for it, bringing in the breath. What most of us do when we're triggered, we hold our breath and go up into our head, trying to figure out some way to push this feeling back down and feel better. This spiritual journey, particularly on earth, is not about feeling better. It's about getting better at feeling or really discovering the entire palette of feelings and letting us integrate the unintegrated stuff, which is what we like to call the angers, fears, and griefs, which have been pushed down because we've called them bad. So tears are wonderful. Laughter is wonderful. Feeling angry is wonderful. What would it be like to really get triggered, really be angry and really want to punch someone to thank them, to not make them wrong and say, wow, this is all about this energy that's flowing through me. What is anger? I'll tell you when I first got together with this partner, <laughs> because that's what those soulmate partners do. They don't come in to give you unconditional love. They come in to show you all the that you're not willing to give unconditional love. And so sitting with anger and when it came up because i stuffed all my anger because we've all had some real traumatic childhoods and most of our parents are not comfortable with their anger either so when a child comes in and has the terrible twos which is about clearing that old karma the parents go oh and they throw more back at them right oh my god this anger thing is not good i, I can't sh I, i'm not going to be able to survive if i'm angry women have definitely got that so when I sat with my anger, and it was a couple of days that it was, I'm sorry, I'm like, oh my God, that anger is still there. But I watched it integrate and I owned it as my power. And as it integrated, I was able to see, oh, that thing that I was so mad at, that was get, letting me see, oh, that was my parents. That was this, that was back then. And suddenly something that seemed so horrible in the moment it just melts away because you realize the gift that it was giving you. Yes, beautifully said. And it so illustrates how awareness, awareness, awareness. Yeah. And so being in the moment, staying in the present, beginning to notice how your thoughts just so simply can take you off on this tangent and just and so, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's, it's just neutral, but it's helpful to notice I'm not in the present, I'm lost in my head again. I'm not in the present, I'm lost in my head again. Then you can come back to the present and sometimes go, oh, what was I thinking about? Is that valid? But suddenly we're taking all these wonderful tools that we have, the mind, the thoughts, the emotions, and we're bringing them into harmony with, it's about living on purpose. So many of the clients that I work with, they go, I want to know my purpose. I can't find my purpose. And what I hopefully come to in working with them is they move into a place where it's not about some purpose that they need to get to, but it's about a life lived on purpose within that, you know, truth of your own essence. Yes. Okay. So beautiful. You have such great wisdom to share and <laughs> We're going to talk about your special offer and how people can work with you for this activation of the divine feminine and so much more. But I wanted to give you time now for that activation with Perfect. Saint Germain. Wonderful. All right. So everybody get comfortable again. Feel the breath. As you breathe in, feel gravity and the relationship to the breath. Feel your connection with Mother Earth, recognizing that your entire body is made up of Earth substance. It's a gift to you from Mother Earth. And when we do the purple flame activation that is that was initiated by Quan Yin, but what really activated as through Saint Germain, he he uh, brought in the structure to bring it into the body the energy moves in through the different energetic portals in the body there's 13 of them the two ankles the two knees the two hips the wrists 
the elbows and the shoulders. And then the 13th portal is the entire spinal column, which opens up between the shoulder blades into the heart chakra. And with the tones that I'm going to do, it's going to activate or reveal a white rose right there in your heart. This is what your uh, opportunity is to visualize that white rose as I hit the sustained part of the tone and see that tone actually uh, uh, inspiring that rose to open up, revealing that gentle purple flame in the center, purple violet flame. It is the flame of forgiveness, of humility, and of compassion. These are the most powerful heart activations, love, of course, but humility, compassion, and love. So take a deep breath, and with the exhale, sink into your body, and then let this tone move in through the portals and activate that purple flame. Again, once again, as I move up, you can let your mind go to your ankles, knees, hips, wrists, elbows, shoulders. As I hit that sustained note, feel your entire spinal column beginning to vibrate with that vibration. And then see that purple flame actually lifting up through the throat chakra, through the third eye, through the crown, and accessing, opening up into that soul star chakra. So what we're doing now, we're sharing this divine loving energy of Mother Earth, which we are evolving with and helping it evolve here. We're sending it into the other realms to create an open channel for that energy to center now into your individual essence through that purple flame. Here we go. Coming back down with this tone. Now let it go. Feel that vibration of humility, of compassion of forgiveness, of unconditional love, which is experienced through unconditional acceptance and non-resistance. That feeling of just being here now that I like to call sweet, sublime satisfaction. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, simply being. There, I turned my sound, uh, my original sound off, so you shouldn't have an echo now. <laughs> okay, I love yeah. that the toning. Oh wow, cleansing, purifying, harmonizing. Well, and that's what that Saint Germain Purple Flame does. It really, it's quite cleansing. Yep. Yes. And I love just everything you spoke of today and all of it. And that's what makes you such an incredible teacher and a great guide. And I do just want to share that you and I have, we've had, we've spent personal time together and you have actually helped change my life. Just about what we were talking about today with everything and understanding and the expansion of things and um, I still have that crystal that you gave me, and uh, I think of you every day. <laughs> well, I, I, I have to, I have to say, I gave you that crystal, 
partly for my spiritual selfishness because I wanted it to be down there with you because my, my crystals, I often give them to special clients because I, you know, we're coming together with the divine energy. There really is this, this divine community of soul workers is what I like to call us activating on the planet and uh, to, to make those connections and the crystals are helping so much with that. I just went, whenever I, I work with you or, 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 particularly special what i call my goddess clients i feel the crystals just celebrating so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i do want to share i have um my set of guides i call them the sofa council because they and i believe that um the crystal that you gave me helped anchor the energies and saint germain and Quan yin are part of that sofa council so that is another way that we are connected and um, it's just divine. So thank you. And again, you do incredible healing sessions with people, personal activation sessions, and you do work with crystals and all of that and the toning and sound and light. And so this special offer that you have for our beautiful audience, I know people are gonna wanna work with you on it. Share with us what happens in a special off in this special offer or in the sessions that you do well it, it really is about coming together and i have to say uh without hopefully sounding conceited that i do feel i have a special ability to connect to the heart energy of of people and really help to activate it and kind of kind of move through all the stuff that that we have the gift is there's so much support out there and my my angels come through and i, I also they're very often with clients will tune into ancestors you know gr grandmother who was passed right i tune into the guides that are helping them and i can help them see and feel that that person is there with you and your invitation now is to talk to them reach out to them use your imagination to to really access that connection and with the the, the special uh offer that i'm giving it really uh i went into a deep meditation after you invited me to, to be part of this this new series i went into a deep meditation and this is what was brought through the activating the love power and wisdom through the chakra triads uh, via the divine feminine and as all my work is I get an idea of what it's going to look like and then I trust that it will evolve and the guides will come in during the process to show me what it is so I can't say exactly what it is though but but I have an idea and every time I talk about it I can start to feel it activating in my body but it really is about empowering you where you are and helping you kind of see what's always been there but you've been looking elsewhere and you haven't quite looked within. So it's, and it's going to be 90 minutes. So I'll have a good amount of time to go through it. And, uh, and the, depending on how many people are there, you know, usually always time for a little, a little bit of feedback or people to ask questions and stuff. And certainly working individually, uh, it's been amazing. I mean, the clients that I, uh, the, uh, that I've been attracting are, are quite, you know, re really wonderful and so ready to hear this this information and open to this new energy. Yes, you are a light workers mentor, a light workers guide. And so I know that those who are already on their journey can get great insight. Like I said, I've shared uh, my personal history with you and it's beautiful. It's beautiful, the connection. And I know people are gonna love their time with you. So thank you for that. 90 minutes is significant. That is very generous of you. Thank you. So much can go on there. That, uh, you know, that's that's so life-changing, 90 minutes. And and during the process, I will be giving an offer, a, a special offer for people who would like to work with me individually as well. So just, you know. Oh, definitely. beautiful. Yeah. And okay. if you want to check out my website, it's karstenspencer.com. And I'm sure all that information will will be made available to you. All right. Well, then that event uh, is here on this web page. Scroll down and see it and just join in to this beautiful activation with Karsten. We are excited. Karsten, okay. I want to thank you. Let me share, share one more thing. I'll keep forgetting sure. about this. 
for for yeah. the past uh, year or so, I've been the spiritual leader of a unity church uh, in in uh, in East Richmond, and we do Zoom our our uh, services every Sunday. So check that out as well. Unity of Richmond East Bay. Uh, you can find us on the on the internet, and you can you can watch me via Zoom three Sundays a month. That's it's a great, cool. It's a wonderful congregation. I always have interesting topics that I talk about and stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so tune in to the Unity Church and the Zoom sessions with Karsten Spencer, and join him for the ninety minute play shop, which is empowering the divine feminine via love, power, and wisdom. Thank you, Karsten. As we say goodbye, I just want to give you a moment for final thoughts. You know, I, I, I don't really have any final thoughts, but what I have now is final feelings. Just, you know, my, my heart is just like vibrating with love, connecting with you and remembering our time together and knowing that we're connecting with so many of those wonderful souls that you're, you know, what you've been doing helps to bring them all together. So I'm just kind of sitting in this wonderful energy. So I really want to just thank you so much for what you do and all the wonderful, powerful energy that you bring to the planet. Oh, well, thank you. I share this gratitude right back with you and with everyone. Thank you again. We are so grateful for you watching and being a part of this and expanding your awareness and being present with all of us and your guides. This is how we shift into new earth and we're very, very excited and we feel great. Thank you, Karsten. Namaste. Namaste. a presentation of New Earth One Network, your home for New Earth Living. Access information, education, and videos on living from the heart in unity consciousness. Visit newearthone.com.